In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have come together at the name of Jesus. As we do so, we welcome each and every one of you to this Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. In a special way, we welcome our friends who join us from the Classical Schools Group in Atlanta, Georgia, as well as those who join us at home through our live stream broadcast. Now, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. shall cease to
let us pray. O God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair or rather are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he, will, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing, do nothing out of selfishness or out of vain glory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, what is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, 
go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not, but afterwards changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, the first. Jesus said to them, amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Whenever I hear today's reading from the prophet Ezekiel, I immediately think of how often we are like the house of Israel and say, the Lord's way is not fair, especially when things do not go the way we want them to go. These might also be words that we cry out when our prayers are not answered not answer the way we think that they should be answered. Or when we perceive that someone is getting more than us or doing better than we are. And for whatever reason, we do not think that they are as deserving as we are. In any of these situations, I imagine that you might have asked the question, what about me? If you think back to last Sunday's gospel of the vineyard owner and those who worked in the vineyard, this was also the case of those workers who worked all day and same payment as those who worked for only one hour. Those who put in a full day's work basically felt shortchanged. And they were not only angry with the owner, but also not pleased that the latecomers received the same pay as them. They were envious of the good fortune of those hired last. And they asked the question, what about us? God responds to the house of Israel in today's reading from Ezekiel and to us that it is we who are unfair. Especially when we hold on to resentments, refuse to forgive, and judge by worldly standards and not by God's. Ezekiel also announces that those who turn from virtue to sin will die, and those who turn from evil will preserve their life and live. Which fits right into today's gospel, which addresses the difference between saying one thing and doing another. The gospel presents Jesus in a situation of conflict with the religious leaders in the face of their own challenge to the authority of Jesus. Jesus turns the tables on them 
and he confronts their own positions in the parable. Basically asking, who are the truly good? Those who say that they intend to do good, but do not? Or those who say that they will not do what is right, but in fact do the right thing? With the parable, Jesus is basically holding up a mirror for the leaders of the people to look into and to see themselves, to measure themselves. Because while the sinners or those who are called sinners, prostitutes and tax collectors, heard the word of God, changed their life, and were welcomed into the kingdom of God, those people who were considered to be the good people, like the Pharisees, like the scribes, like the elders of the people, when they heard the word of God, especially the preaching of John the Baptist, they turned a deaf ear because the words were not the words they wanted to hear. And so God's way was not fair to them. It wasn't what they wanted. But as being the, quote, professionally religious people, the words of Ezekiel in today's first reading should have been ringing loud and clear in the hearts and the minds of the scribes and the Pharisees. They were supposed to know the word of God, know what it meant. They were the teachers instructing the people how to apply that word. But they only did so to their favor. They were blind, blind to their own faults, blind to their own deafness, blind to their own need for change. And so today's parable, Jesus is calling them to turn away from their current course and to follow the path that will lead to the kingdom of heaven. Whether we like it or not, none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. We all need improvement. We all need change. Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who was a frequent visitor to Mary's shrine during her lifetime and is now with us in the Trinity Dome, once remarked that we are all capable of good and evil. We are not born bad. Everybody has something good inside. Some hide it, some neglect it, but it is there. God's grace and our cooperation with God's grace helps us to find and develop the good that is within us. And God's grace gives us the ability to say yes, to say yes what God asks, to say yes to what God wants, to say yes to God's ways and when necessary, to say no to what is wrong, what is sinful, and say yes to what is right and what is just. God wants us to avoid sin, not because he wants to make life difficult for us, but because God knows that sin hurts us and sin can, in fact, destroy our life. 
by overcoming our sins, by overcoming our weaknesses. As the Lord promised to the prophet Ezekiel, we will preserve our life and we will live. However, we have to also remember that becoming holy, becoming perfect, doing what is right and not sinning is a lifelong process. And that because we are human and because of original sin, we have a fallen nature. And so sometimes we might fail. But that should not be used as an excuse to justify our failures, but as a reminder that we are work to work toward perfection, to correct ourselves, and not allow our sins and our weaknesses to conquer us but with God's grace for us to conquer them. As Pope Francis has said, God asks us to renew every day the choice of good over evil, the choice of truth rather than lies, the choice of love for our neighbor over selfishness, so that we may obtain the life and salvation promised by Jesus. If today were not Sunday, today, October 1st, would be, still is, the feast of St. Teresa of the Child Jesus, or you might know her better as being the little flower, but the Sunday celebration takes precedence over the celebration of the saint today but it's still her feast day. And if you have time after mass, you might want to stop at her oratory, which is at the narthex on the west side, that's your left. As a Carmelite nun living in the 1800s, Therese coined the phrase, the little way, referring to her belief that every act, no matter how small, is an opportunity to meet and praise God. Because of her struggle with tuberculosis, Therese was often confined to her bed and therefore was unable to perform many duties as the other sisters. And so with her little way, as she would express, she would do little things with great love. While struggling with tuberculosis, St. Therese wrote her spiritual autobiography, which many of you may have read or be familiar with, called The Story of a Soul. And there you will find one of the conversations that she had with a novice, in which St. Therese counsels the good Lord does not demand more from you than goodwill. He looks at you with love. The best rule is that we should follow what love inspires. What love inspires us to do from moment to moment with the sole desire of pleasing the good Lord in everything he asks of us. Perfection consists in doing his will, in being that which he wants us to be. May Saint Therese of the Child Jesus pray with us this day and help us to become that which God wants us to be. And as we prayed in the opening prayer of today's Mass, also, one day, attain the treasures of heaven.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Mindful that God hears the prayer, let us now present these requests. For the church on the eve of a new phase in the synodal journey, that the presence of the gospel, alive and at work in her, may make her like the vineyard in the parable, a vital place where all men and women who seek meaning in their life find a place, a word, and a breath of hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country, that we may be united in building a society in which all people have the opportunity to live with dignity and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That on this Respect Life Sunday, a greater awareness for the sanctity of all human life will grow ever deeper in the hearts of people and nations throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in abusive relationships, that they may experience God's love and find the courage and support to seek help and free themselves from domestic violence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that many will have the courage to live out the gospel in the world in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs we hold in our hearts and for the special intentions entrusted to the national shrine by our pilgrims and benefactors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God will grant eternal life to all those who have died and gone before us in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your people and give us what you have inspired us to ask for in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. We invite you to use the envelopes provided in the pews or visit the National Shrine online as a means of sharing in our ministry at the Basilica of the National Shrine. Thank you for your continued support and generosity.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice which our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant also, merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god for in you we live and move and have our being and while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Therese of the Child Jesus, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Wilton our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Today's second collection is for the preservation of the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. Your generosity to this collection will be greatly appreciated to keep the Basilica a beautiful, sacred place for prayer and pilgrimage. Thank you for your kind generosity. Thank you. 
Let us pray. <clears throat> May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ. To his suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, Jesus promised to be present in the midst of his disciples gathered in his name. In the coming days in Rome, Pope Francis will open the first accession of the 16th Ordinary General Assembly of the Senate of Bishops. Invoking the blessings of the Lord, we lift our minds to God, that by the stirring of the Holy Spirit, he may strengthen our communion, lead us to all truth, and enlighten the participants of the Synod without ceasing. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May our God and Father, who in many and various ways spoke to our fathers to the prophets, direct you and the whole church in fidelity to his word and in discernment of his will. May the only begotten Son, sent in the fullness of time to manifest to all the riches of the Father's mercy, keep you in communion with himself and your brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. May the Holy Spirit lead you all, and especially the Synodal Assembly, to perceive the signs of the times, so that, adhering to the will of God in all things, you may bear the abundant fruit of unity by promoting the life of the church and witnessing to the gospel. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Amen.